So let's start by selecting a drawdown buildup test in the well test wizard. Next we're asked if we want to continue using the wizard and we are going to use it uh, for this example. It's a great tool to help guide you through all of the different analysis techniques that we have available in well test. So first we're going to import our pressure data. And to do that, we identify the first row of data we wish to import by left-clicking our mouse on the row number here. Next, we are going to identify the columns that we wish to import by selecting the data type and the units for each of the columns. So we have our date, our clock time, and hours, minutes, and seconds and our measured sand phase pressure in PSIA. So next we're asked to name the gauge and to give it a start time. And it's going to automatically pick off that first date and time for the, from the first row of data from your file. So that's okay for us. We're going to leave that the way it is. So we don't have any additional data we wish to append to this file but we do have the rate file that we wish to import. So we're gonna leave this checked as yes. And we're gonna go ahead and import our rate data. Again, select that first row of data we wish to import. Identify the columns and the unit type. In this case, we have our gas rates in million standard cubic feet per day. Again, we're asked for a gauge name. And we're going to leave that start date and time the way it is here. Again, it's taking that first date and time off the first row of data. So we don't have any additional data we wish to append to the end of that file. And now that we've imported our pressures and rates, we're done importing our data. So now we're going to move to the data management tab where we can prepare our data for the analysis. So I'm going to go ahead and exit the wizard right now by clicking finish. So we can do some work here in data management. And then when we're ready to go back, we can go ahead and select that last wizard point that we left off at. It's got a little check mark beside it. So as you can see, we have our pressure and rate data available to us. We have our actual data and the data displayed in the plot form here at the bottom. So if we have a closer look at our rates and pressures together, we can see that our rate history doesn't match up with our pressure history. So we need to synchronize the rates to the pressures. And we do that by clicking on the Synchronize tab here. And we're going to select our pressure data for our primary data set. And for our secondary data set, we're going to select our rate data. And then we have a sync point on either one of these plots, on both of these plots. And what we want to do is locate either a final flowing pressure or a first shut-in pressure. So I'm going to move our pointer close to that area and use this rectangular zoom to get a closer look. And you'll notice here on the right, we have a zoomed plot of both the data sets to help aid you in selecting those sync points. So now that we're close, I'm going to use my arrow keys on the keyboard to get me to that final flowing pressure. Now that we've identified that, we're going to go and look for that final flow rate on our rate data. So this is our final flow rate before we shut in the well. And now we can have a look at the resultant data set before we accept the changes. And as you can see, now we have our flowing pressures matching up with our rate history before the final buildup when we have the well shut in. So now that we're happy with that, we're going to click Apply. And now you'll see in our data management that our pressures and rates have been lined up. So now that we've done that, we're going to go back to our wizard and 
The next step is to transfer a set of data from the data management tab to the production editor. So we're going to select our pressure data and our rate data. Okay, so the next step is to remove any excess data that we have at the beginning or the end of the test. Usually when we're running or pulling the gauges, we'll have some pressures here at the back end or the front end. For this example, we don't have that, so we're going to move on to the next step, um, which is to enter in any production and injection information that we have prior to the test. Um, we don't have any of that for this example, so we're going to move on by selecting no here. And next, we're going to identify our shut-in points. Um, we've already done that by synchronizing our data up, but if we didn't, we could go in here and manually enter in zero flows for our first shut-in points where applicable. 